Forza Motorsport has been released for us mortals on the 5th of October, and ever since the internet has been a dumpster fire of different users bashing the latest release of this franchise. One would think this is an unredeemable product which doesn't deserve your time, but the truth lies somewhere past the flashy thumbnails and inflammatory video titles. Don't mention how I'm doing the same thing. I find Forza Motorsport has a few things going on its side, and as someone who never experienced anything outside Horizon before, it has left a good impression thanks to a few key details. Any racing game which aims to be this and it's at least good physics, and Forza Motorsport manages to accomplish this. I am happy to say it strikes a good balance as one can play with a controller, even if a few adjustments have to be made for a better experience as the default settings are rather baffling. I admit I was confused during the first hours of the game as I couldn't get to terms with my controller. Steering felt delayed and the amount of time lost was unbearable. I will share my setup for controller on screen right now. I should mention the biggest change comes by reducing the steering dead zone to zero. Also, I have been playing with normal steering which feels the best with a controller. I wish I knew about these changes before I streamed my first races on Forza. I did struggle for a while and it was one of the most embarrassing streams I ever made, don't, don't watch that. I admit part of it came with my first car choice. You know how there are games where every car feels the same despite all their differences? This doesn't apply to Forza as each car feels different, and the first car that I got my hands on was the Ford Mustang, just because I wanted to do something different, and it was a harsh wake-up call, as he ended suffering for the entire tutorial. A feeling which my second car managed to clean. Everything started to make sense once I bought this Alpine A610, as it felt like a proper rear engine car. Enjoying that characteristic low speed understeer made me realize the physics indeed work as intended. Weight transfer in particular is really well made as cars dive and move as they shield under braking and throttle. They also experience body roll on their corners and these sensations are well translated to a controller. In a few words, this means it's easy to find the limits of a car and maintain them on the edge of breakup, unless you push them too hard and lose control. Certain cars come with softer suspension setups which makes them feel less athletic through corners. While yes, these choices harm cars in a competitive sense, as some much more better than others, it makes them fun to experience and tune. I will get into the tuning system soon, but I also want to mention weather as one can race under rain in Forza. While it isn't brilliant, as it mostly feels like a minor grip reduction, it can be fun as one has to adapt to different braking zones, and heavy rain can throw some cars off their balance, and it's nice to see my wiper blade in action, and if you like to see them too, you should totally leave a like on this video. I do like the cars on offer, but I find most brands have a scarce roster which is a shame. I know some people might not care about hiding more Porsches or Volvos, but it feels weird to have brands which have one or two cars on offer, when these have interesting cars in their history. The previously mentioned Alpine A610 was a nice surprise as you don't see them in games, ever. Same for the Maserati Ghibli from the 90s. And another car which caught my attention was the BMW 3 Series Compact, in its best stream, the 323 TI, another car which deserves to be featured in more games, and a personal dream car of mine. Even if it's a bit hard to reach with a $300 income, the car models aren't anything to go crazy, even if the fact I'm playing with low settings may be a part of it. I get people who were expecting better models, even more so when one considers there aren't many new cars. So I will say this is a fair bit of criticism. The interiors look good enough, one doesn't pay attention to these things while driving to be honest, unless there are glaring flaws which disturb the experience. But really, the main handicap which cars experience in this game comes with the new leveling system, which comes straight out of a Pokemon game. At least cars cannot hide on tall grass, even if some might be comfortable there. The problem with this system lies with the fact upgrades are locked behind different levels, meaning one has to spend a few hours before having all the parts to build a proper setup. I had a funny incident while playing as I bought a lot of Sebora which didn't drive well in stock shape. It had a few issues which could be improved with setup changes. I admit I had fun trying to troubleshoot this car as I tried different things to improve its handling as they unlocked. It was a good way to discover which parts solve specific issues. It's nice to have your build after fine-tuning each part as they were unlocked, but it's an unnecessary time waster given one usually builds cars for online racing. It's absurd to demand so much time of a player in order to create a competitive car. This change will also mean most people won't even bother trying other cars. Once the meta cars are discovered, well, Evergreen will look the same. And I think these cars will be discovered rather quickly as the usual Forza tricks can still be used. I admit they haven't been able to discover all the quirks of suspension setups for now, but they can really transform a car for the better. I do find it absurd how many points some of these parts can cost, with differentials being the worst offender, even more so when high-powered cars usually need some sort of adjustment to put their power down. I also believe a big part of setups will boil down to shifting given turn 10 has decided to change the way manual and clutch shifting works. One now has to lift off and switch gears. While yes, this is more realistic, it's slow, very slow, and I couldn't find a way to make it work. The only upgrade which improves this 
situation is the racing gearbox, which is always good given one can fine tune each gear and get the most out of each car in the process, so I believe flywheel, clutch and gearbox will be the starter pack of upgrades for a plethora of cars. With all this talk about cars, you will ask where they can be used. Forza Motorsport has a career mode called Builders Cup where different events are scattered. There isn't much in the means of progression, as you switch cars constantly to meet the requirements of each tournament. I do find the restrictions are fun however, as they are usually groups of cars which are closely related. These championships can take more than an hour if one doesn't skip qualifying sessions, which you totally can't, it just takes a bit of menu exploring. Bizarre choice, but it's not as bad as some people have made it up to be. I find the racing experience with the AI isn't as refined as you can overtake multiple opponents of the line. They struggle driving too wide and often cause traffic jams as they break too early and cause accidents. Forza suffers the same issue which has been present in racing games since their birth. There is a set of opponents which are much faster and they build effortless caps with the player. One can overtake them usually, but the number of laps given isn't enough, resulting in these scenarios where one could win if they had an extra lap. At this point, I don't think this can be fixed. Your favorite racing game has this issue too to some degree. The reality is, once these opponents pull away you can have some decent races with them. The only real issue I find comes with the fact one can exploit their track awareness and force them off track by themselves, given they seem allergic to make contact with the player. They'll just dive and gift you the position. Also, stacking overtakes is a good way to increase car experience, a small trick I discovered. The circuits are pretty nice too, and enjoy them, and it's the first time I experienced some of them as well, meaning I got to learn them and I got to enable racing lines to have a better clue. I also decided to mark track limits even if the penalty system is quite generous in single player. I still got to try online as I want to build more cars, but it seems pretty good, which I'm happy as I was hoping for a racing game which I could play with others and had better track design than Horizon 5. It's safe to say my view on Forza Motorsport isn't as negative compared to other content creators, however this game was released with a series of technical issues which have to be mentioned. The most annoying one for me is the fact the autosave feature in PC seems to be broken at times, as it's using some sort of Windows Cloud system. Sometimes you can close the game and find yourself repeating races thanks to this autosave lag, so to speak, it's the best way I could describe it. Another issue comes with the crashes, random crashes which can happen at any time. I am confident these issues could be fixed with a day one patch. It's wrong how games are released in a rush and with glaring flaws, yes, but this isn't exclusive to Forza, and it will be absurd to pretend it won't keep happening, just like always online games which have become a plague as well. It is annoying, yes, but I repeat it will be absurd to pretend other games are free from this sin. Is Forza Motorsport a perfect game? Not at all, it will never be, but it's not bad either, far from it. It manages to fill a niche which has been left unanswered for years in the PC market, where Horizon 5 used to be the most popular option. I know other titles existed, but they were dropped as fast as they were introduced. A decent car roster, good circuits, and brilliant car physics are a solid base for online racing, which I'm sure it will develop over the next months. While it isn't the promised product, it was never going to be. How many times developers have promised products and failed to deliver? I lost count, and it will keep happening. We should all tame our expectations and take products for what they are. I get people were expecting new cars models, new this, new that, and that's fair, but personally, I'd rather have a racing game where cars drive properly and presents a good, approachable first step into the world of cars, and I'm really grateful for this. By now, everyone should be able to play this game, or soon enough, depends when this video comes out. You're probably better off buying the normal edition, it's only people like me who end up buying these expensive releases so you can have a good, reliable source who knows a thing or two about cars and cares about this little hobby of ours. Even if my wallet surely took a hit, I guess the BMW dream is that. A dream. I guess we'll settle with an MX-5. Ah, uh, never mind. I'm done. I'll keep using my legs. While I won't ask you to buy me a car, there is people who support my efforts and allow me to bring these new games to you. They are my patrons, and we thank them as follows. Or amateur racers? Professional racers? And world champions, Lane Dev, See What Happens Racing UK, Whiskey Tuesday, Sundere Kiseli, Enzo Lasonieri, Raciel, Hunter Kaufman, Josh Big, Crusader Glenn, Lonnie Murray, Tyscom, Matim19, and Espriel. If you wish to join these wonderful people, you can follow the link to my page in the description of this video. You will get early access to my videos along with a special role on my Discord server. All of this is starting at $3 a month. Also, we are working our way towards 50 patrons as I will do a 9 hour endurance with a fourth kind Gran Turismo 4 when we manage to 
reach it. If you wish to see more content, there is a playlist at the end of this video. You can subscribe in order to stay updated of my latest videos as well. I hope you have enjoyed this overview of Forza Motorsport, and if you did, you could share it around so people have access to a different point of view. I hope to see you all in my next video. Take care and bye for now.